All right, so let's see if I can um, be of use and possibly um, of entertainment value um, while we work with the subject of good grief. And really, if you haven't got good at working with grief, especially for the past two years, I think it is, then you may never have a chance of being good at working with grief. But today, I'm going to talk a little bit about grief because, especially because since last night in the dream world and all morning and into the early afternoon, I've been really uh, dealing with a lot of feelings of grief. So if you're watching this video and you feel like right in the center of your chest, like a lump, you know, that may be my fault. I take full responsibility for you feeling bad because you're kind of listening to me and tuning into me and going like, oh man, I didn't feel. It's like when one of the members of my household came walking in and uh, mentioned how, you know, just walking in the house from having been out for quite a while, just walking in the house kind of made them feel exhausted. And I thought, you know, that's one of the effects I have on people is I can be exhausting like right this very minute I might be exhausting and you might be like going like okay that's enough this guy and click off I go and then I look at my analytics and my analytics say you know people watched your video for you know 0 0.02 seconds <laughs> which is like makes me sad maybe that's why I'm so sad today it's just that people aren't watching my whole videos because they just are lasting way too long because I just can't stop talking. So to continue talking and prove that I can't stop talking, I'm going to talk a bit about grief. So let's start off with, let's start off with yesterday. Um, so yesterday I, I do this thing called keeping fields open so certain people that I'm close with you know um, and have big things going on in their life I set up a healing field for them and I keep it open and so one of my um, kind of uh, yeah one of my dear clients they're all pretty much dear clients but what one of them um, has a parent who has been kind of hospicing, you know, I think that's a term I just made up, but has been involved in hospice care for probably a year now. I mean, you know, you know hospice care is supposed to be towards the end of life, and then somebody comes in and just helps the family deal with, you know, the passing of a loved one. But, I mean, this has been going on and on on and on and on not that I'm in a hurry to have anybody leave but um, but kind of the tension that can build up for family members when someone's you know appearing to want to go and talking about going and then not going it's kind of like on this you may get upset when I say this but it's kind of like somebody's over at your house You've had them over and you feel like, okay, that was a good evening. I'm glad, really glad you came. And, and uh, now there'll just be the period of subtle hints that, well, I hope everything's safe on your drive home. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. And then they just stick around. And, um, you know, one doesn't like to really have those kind of thoughts about someone they love. But if that person is really wanting to go and they're just not able to do so, it's not that any of us really want to assist another one to leave the planet. I don't personally want to do it um, myself. I don't really, yeah, I don't really want to help anybody exit for the most part, except gnats and uh, mosquitoes. And gnats and mosquitoes, I, I do want to help to exit. Um, I can't think of anything else really, gnats, mosquitoes. That's about it. Yeah. So, anyway, 
so since last night in the dream world, and so I set a field up yesterday for my friend and the parents, and one of the parents is on their way out, and set up the field and held this healing field open for the three of them, and also at the same time had another field open for a friend of mine who's heading off, I think, tomorrow to go to some music competition, you know, where it's a showcase and they actually judge people and, and then they might win an award and might, you know, speed their career forward. Um, yeah, so, th but the energies there um, are, you know, I mean, this person's a blues singer, just to give you an example, and he's got some history where he can really sing the blues, as we all probably do. So that's enough of that. So I do have people that I'm close to who are involved in, you know, people passing. When some of us are somewhat older, we might have parents that are, you know, preparing to go. But... Um, so now I think I feel like if you stayed this far, it's this far into this, I'm going to help you release this energy. So I'm maybe that's why I held on to it all morning so I could help you <laughs> release it and me at the same time. It's the benefit of doing healing work with others is that you get the benefit of the healing. So whatever you heal, you help others, you know, kind of homeopathically. And if you don't know what that means, kind of look it up. Um, if you don't know what that means homeopathically, you're probably not watching this video or you probably haven't made it this far. So just a little bit further, I'm going to just suggest that you do this first. I'm going to suggest that you kind of imagine that around the earth are a lot of thought forms, like universal thought forms of grief, anger, um, fear, shame, guilt, all these different things, all these unresolved energetics. And so those are the worlds I'm going to suggest that you don't have to take these personally. They're the, they're the world's energy fields. Maybe you have a very tiny part in some of these energetics. I'm trying to make my fingers work correctly when they're actually on opposite sides to what I think. Because this looks to me like it's when I'm looking at it, my left. This looks like my right. But actually, this is my left and this is my right. So it's very confusing. But by the time I do this, this will all be turned around. And I'll be actually facing you the way I'll be facing me when I watch it myself, which I always do before I publish it. And I always get a good kick out of some of the things I do that affect me that I didn't have notice they affected me while I was doing them. Anyway, we can state these words. And you can do it for fear, you can do it for anger, you can do it for whatever you want. But we state these words. I disconnect from the field of grief surrounding the planet. As you imagine, if there's eight billion of us on the planet, and that's what, you know, they say, there's eight billion of us on this planet right now, humans, you know, how many other life forms there are, trees and water creatures, and air creatures, and land creatures. Okay, so you feel that, that's disconnecting from the matrix of grief. You might find yourself yawning. <gasps> Because being connected to the matrix of grief around the planet can um, cause one to be fearful, can cause there to be tension in the jaw and in the ba back of the skull. So let's go ahead and do this just for fun. I disconnect from the matrix of fear surrounding the planet. That's really good to feel that happen as it happens. If you're tuning into to what I'm saying and doing, you're going to feel 
yourself disconnect from the matrix of fear. And we're going to go ahead and disconnect from the matrix of anger. Feel that. Feel the intensity of that. And it's okay to feel the intensity of anger. You know, questionable whether or not it's okay to be violent um, just because you're angry. I don't think, I don't like that personally. I don't like it done to me. I don't like to do it to others except mosquitoes and gnats. Maybe fruit flies if you could get them, but they're kind of fast. Okay, that's the release of anger. And that one's really harder to release, I'm finding. So we're just going to stay with it until we feel ourselves disconnect from the field or matrix or thought form of anger shining the planet. Okay, you did it. You, did you feel it? <sighs> okay. Now the energetics shifted. They shifted for me. They probably shifted for you because you're working with this field of relationship between us. So even though I'm just kind of like this talking head on a screen, I'm actually a person that exists on the planet. Um, this isn't being done from a spaceship or anything. This is actually, well, it's kind of a spaceship. Yeah, never mind. So. What were we going to do? We are going to release this intense grief. I don't need to cover my mouth every time I yawn, but my mom told me I, I was supposed to and sneeze or yawn or anything. So every time I'm going to keep yawning for a minute. <sighs> Phew. A lot of energy releasing. So notice your chest. If your chest felt tighter when I asked earlier and you're still here, then notice that your chest is about 25% looser. So we're going to do another exercise and I'm going to keep teaching you these exercises because if you keep doing these exercises, you'll get better at them and you'll get the feel of it. And it's just kind of like Let's compare it. I'm a guy. I played sports. So let's compare it to sports. So when I was, <laughs> when, when you're teaching someone how to play, like, say, baseball or catch, where a person has a glove and the ball, and you're trying to teach them how to catch this ball. And oftentimes, you know, they'll catch one in the face. It, even if you're throwing it underhanded as careful as you can. It's going to happen. You're going to catch one right in the face. And you're going to be like, bummer, that really hurt. That really bothered me. Even if it's just like, even not a hard ball, but a soft ball, which are bigger and harder to catch. So if you really want to mess with a kid's head, toss him a soft ball because it's kind of like a large grapefruit sized thing. And you got this little tiny glove and it's definitely going to bounce up and catch him in the nose more frequently. So that's a good way to learn to hold your hand away from your face when you're trying to catch this ball because you've got less chance of that going on. All right, so now notice about 50% of that grief. So maybe 25% of that grief had to do with you getting smashed in the face with a softball or smashed in the face with a hardball or in the lips. Because the reason I didn't want to pitch wasn't that I couldn't throw it from the pitcher's mound to the catcher. It's because the few times I did it, the batter hit the ball straight at me and I couldn't get out of it fast enough and hit me once or twice in the mouth. Once on the like side of the head and once in the shoulder and once right in the center of the chest. And I, you know, I couldn't stop it. It happened so fast. I threw. I was coming forward, the person hit it, and I went, oh crap, and bam. Hit me right in the chest, right where all that grief was. So maybe that was unresolved grief, and the mouth was just bad. It's just, you just don't want to get hit in the mouth with a hard ball. So they're smaller, about the size of a tennis ball, right in around there. You don't want to get hit by a tennis ball either. Even though it's fuzzy and it bounces and it seems soft, you know, somewhat, but you get hit in that 
especially in the face. And, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to happen. You're, you're, even if you don't play tennis well, you have this racket, springy racket with this tennis ball and you hit it, it's going to go pretty fast. Even a badminton can hurt, especially if it hit by your stepson or something and he's really trying to hit you in the face. Because why is it? The face is right there. And the face is what irritates us about a person more than anything. Like if you think right now, just like this face, like you, don't you just feel like you want to just hit it with a birdie, you know, ping pong, boom, just hit that face. And now look at your chest. Isn't this interesting? Like I'd say it's 75% gone, that intense tension right in the chest, 75% gone, which means we have 25% left. So how do we release that last 25%? Well, isn't it interesting that the muscles associated with crying <laughs> and laughing <laughs> are the same? Like try it yourself. <laughs> Notice that's a diaphragm. <laughs> now laugh. <laughs> same diaphragm. Pretty much just a slightly different tonality, but notice this, whatever is left of this chest, you know, and I'm going to say maybe we're about 20%, so we got rid of it a little tiny bit more, but let's just go there now and just go, ha, 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 okay, there's a little bit more, and then let's go to whatever story is in this chest. I put that story in my left hand. Now, if you actually have a story that you're feeling grief about, you can go ahead and turn this off and turn it back on again and release this, but turn it off after I tell you how to do this. So you've got the story in your left hand. There's the left hand. I don't know how to keep it. Yeah, it's so confusing. There, let's keep it right there. So you got the story in the left hand, which is actually looks like my right hand from my vantage point, but from your vantage point, it's gonna look like the left hand. So, and imagine that's the left hand. And then this is the right hand. And so you got the story in the left hand. So let's just say whatever story is containing this grief, I put it in my left hand. And notice how it changed. Now it's sitting in your left hand. Now take, leave the story in your left hand and take the grief from your left hand into your right hand. And now I have the story in my left hand, the grief in my right hand. Now. You can leave the story, I, and this Canadian story, I mean, you probably say starry, or star, starry, I don't know how to say it in the United States. I've only lived here for 70, two and a half years. So, so we got story, starry, sorry, 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 starry. Is it a starry? You tell a starry, you tell a story. But if you say, why do you say sorry and not sorry? because so it looks like sorry when you look at it. Okay, so sorry, starry, story, story is in your left hand, and in your right hand is now the grief of the story. So you're gonna move your right hand away. You can keep the left hand right where it is, just move the right hand away. And once the right hand gets way out to your side, you know, all the way, arms stretched, you know, a few feet away, just release that grief. Then notice, no grief in the story. And notice way decreased tightness in the chest. So probably um, it doesn't feel like it's completely gone yet, but wait five minutes, you know, 10 minutes afterwards so the body to re, you know, combobulate itself. Because right now it's possibly discombobulated. It's not used to not having that grief in the center of the chest. And the center of the chest has to do with the thymus gland, uh, what's called the heart chakra, but it's really the thymus chakra because the chakras relate to the endocrine glands and the endocrine gland right there is the thymus. This one's the thyroid, this one's the thymus in the center of the chest, and the thymus has to do with your immune system. So the more grief you hold there, the less functional your thymus is, the poorer your immune system. If you want your immune system to work better, let go of grief.
Okay. I think we're still going, but I'm not sure. It just stopped. It just paused itself. So I must have been doing it for too long. So let's see if this is it. And um, we'll just call it good. And so now let's go.